Hey, what's up? What's going on? It's your girl Mary Jane. Please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please share the video to be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. For real, for real, my peoples, my peeps. So today we're going to be talking about Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta, Season 1, Episode 1, OMG. The previews for the whole season seems like it's going to be interesting. It's going to be off the chain. It's going to be off the hook. There's going to be somebody threatening to to beat this person up, to beat that person up. You ain't going to be disrespecting me or my child. All that good stuff. So, here are some of the cast members. We have Bow Wow, which is Shad Moss. We got Jermaine Dupri. We got the brat. It's so good to see the brat because I love the brat. So, so, functify. So, so, that's my shit. So, anyways, we have Shania, which is Jermaine Dupri's daughter. She seems like she's well rounded. She doesn't seem spoiled. She seems really intelligent. She seems like a nice, decent girl that is not um, all about the money and the fame and all that crap. But so far, this is only the first episode. Then we have Regina. Regina is Little Wayne's daughter. And, um,. You know how that goes. Black lives do matter in this motherfucker. So then we have uh, um, Ayana. And she is the Beastie Boys. One of the Beastie Boys' daughter. The DJ Hurricane. That's his daughter, Ayana. Then we have Brandon. Which is Miss Deb's son. Waka Faka, Waka Faka brother. Then we have Zynique. Which is T.I. and Tiny's daughter. So seems interesting huh <laughs> well it is kind of interesting just to see you know Bow Wow and Jermaine the pre-relationship and basically you know one of the parts of the episode is um Shad Moss and he's talking to you know um Jermaine Dupree and you know Shad Moss had just released an album with Soldier Boy or whatever and, you know, J.D. is not feeling that album. You know, he wants Bow Wow to grow up. So Bow Wow goes to the studio. He meets up with Jermaine Dupri. tells Jermaine Dupri he, he's releasing not an album, a mixtape. He's releasing a mixtape. And he's having a party. And he wants Jermaine Dupri to come or whatever to turn up to show up or whatever. Jermaine is like, nah, I'm straight. Nobody wants to listen to that trash music. Like, you want people to take you in as an adult. And for you to grow up and reach different levels in the music game. You can't be releasing that drip drop music. That, that that you know, that music that ain't shit. That ain't hitting on nothing. And so Jermaine Dupri is like, I'm not going. I'm definitely not going. <laughs> and then you see later on in the episode, Jermaine Dupri says that going to one of Bow Wow parties is like going to a gentleman's club. <laughs> so anyways, Jermaine Dupri is just like telling Bow Wow that like you want people to take you serious. You want to elevate your music and your career. You have to do grown folks things. You can't just have this all this turn up music, this music that don't mean shit. That's that's laddy, laggy gagging, poppy gagging type of lyrics that, you know, that he doesn't want to hear because he knows you're capable of more. So, so you know, Jermaine was like, yo, when you want to drop an album, let me know. Get at me. Because I'm not supporting this mixtape. You should be beyond the mixtape. You a Shad Moss. <laughs> so, Jermaine Dupree is just keeping it real. He's just like, yo, I'm not feeling that trash music that you're releasing with, you know, um, Soldier Boy. But he's not saying trash music. I'm saying trash music because it is. Anything with Soldier Boy attached to it is trash. <laughs> No, I take it back. I take it back. And so anyways, um, so then we get Regina. She's with her father, Little Wayne, and they're at the skating boards somewhere, some skating board park, but it's an indoor skating, like garage or warehouse skating um, park or whatever. So Little Wayne, he has on these pink sneakers that he's um, on a skateboard with. And Regina, she has on like this pink um, silver jacket and like little pink spots on it she should have had on her father's shoes and he should have had on her shoes because she had on black black shoes and he had on pink shoes pink and white shoes which would have went well with um regina uh, regina's outfit or whatever or regina's outfit you know what i mean so anyways while they're at the skate park um uh, Regine, she sees the two um, people going in on Little Wayne because he said black lives doesn't matter and she's taking it to heart and she was like she's going to defend her father regardless 
I understand that you got to defend your people, but when they're wrong, they're wrong. You know what I mean? So it's like, how can you go out and just defend somebody to your father to, to the fullest, even though I would do the same thing, but I would do it in a tactful manner as far as like, you know, my father made a mistake, please don't come at him. And I wouldn't get into a beef with my girl. Um, you know what I mean? So it is what it is. So she meets up with T.I.'s daughter, um, Jacquees. <laughs> I'm saying her name wrong. <laughs> and so she meets up with, you know, T.I. and Tiny's daughter, and they talk in a store about it. And so they both agree not to respond to anything because um, Tip responded to Little Wayne's comment that black lives doesn't matter. And I'm so happy. And I was so proud when Tip did, you know, um, reply to Little Wayne's comment because Little Wayne comment that he said was publicly, it was nationally, and it was heard all the way around the world. So with Ti responding, he had to respond just in the same way of Little Wayne did. So to make sure people don't get it twisted, black people don't get it twisted, black people don't, and other people around the world. Just because we are artists doesn't mean that we don't have sense because it made no sense for a black man to say black lives don't matter because if if you're black, you're saying your life don't matter. Basically, and then on top of that, you know, Little Wayne's former wife, she recently, like last year, lost two brothers to violence. So you're saying that your ex-wife, two brothers' life don't matter? You know what I mean? So it is what it is. I don't care how far, how much money you have, how much you are isolated from people, you always know that your life matter. And especially if you're black, you know your life matter. Black lives do matter. Even rich people that, I mean, you know, wealthy billionaires, they believe that white lives matter because it's their lives. Makes no sense for him to even say that. And then, you know, um, Regine was saying that, oh, in the interview, they was asking my father questions. They was asking him stupid questions. No, they was asking a stupid person questions. That's what happened. And a stupid person responded. I'm sorry. It is what it is. It's embarrassing. And, um, if I was you, I wouldn't even want this filmed. <laughs> like, come on, let's get another storyline. Let's not talk about how ignorant my father is, that he don't even think my life matter, you know, because you're his daughter and you're black, so your life don't matter. <laughs> so T.I. responded, and, and you know, uh, Regine didn't like it, and, she's, and then so, you know, she talks to her mother about it. Her mother says, mind your business, stay out of it, because these are two grown men um, beefing or whatever, uh, and let them handle it. But, you know, Regine being spoiled, being, um, not being, not listening to her mom because like, you know, we've seen interviews where Regine said her and her mom are best friends. So she's not, she's not taking the advice from her mom at all. And she jumps right in. Like she needs to stay in her lane in a child's place, not in grown man's business. Stay in your lane and you would be all right. And so, um, so her, um, so it's just like crazy. And it's like, thank you, Tip. Thank you, Tip. <laughs> and so then we get to um, Tiny's daughter. Tiny daughter is, you know, at, at her house or whatever, and she's supposed to be going to meet up with a vocal coach, which is Brandon, because Brandon is a vocal coach, coach, and he can help with your vocals, your long range, your short range, your wide range. He can help with that. And Zach Q and, and um, Zach Q. <laughs> QQ. <laughs> well, she, well, um, Tiny says that her daughter um, is the new age Janet Jackson. I know we love her kids, Tiny, but she's no Janet Jackson. She's no new age Janet Jackson. That was wrong. <laughs> so Zaquis, whatever her fucking name is, she meets up with Brandon. She's not paying attention to Brandon as he's trying to... Um, train her and um, help her with her vocals. She's busy on her phone and basically she calls off to meet and she goes, I'm done. I have to go talk to Regine because it's important because she never texts me like this. So she leaves Brandon high and dry and she tells Brandon, you know, you can come back later when I get my shit situated. Brandon was like, I'm booked. I got things to do. So Brandon feels disrespected and you know, um, he has the right to feel disrespected, but the way that he talks to her, I guess since they're friends or whatever, and, you know, Brandon says, I'm just not, uh, I just don't mess with any fucking artists. You know, I'm not going to put my name on no bullshit, no fucking fake artists, no, you know, I'm not going to be co-signing all that. And, and so, um, Zaquise 
um, she was like, I'm bouncing peace deuces. And he feels slated by it, real slated by it. Um, so anyways, you know, we see the brat. The brat looks good. She's trying to convince, you know, um, Shad Moss, her her and Jermaine are trying to convince Shad, Shad Moss to do his album in Atlanta instead of, you know, LA. So he can fo he can be around his family in Atlanta and basically they can folk they can make him focus on it. And Jermaine I mean and Shad Moss is like, I don't know, because my daughter and my baby mama is in LA. So it is what it is. So um Bow Wow's talking about his release party and all this other good stuff. He wants Jermaine Dupree's daughter to show up and Jermaine's like nah I don't want my daughter to show up but she does show up anyway so it is what it is and so um we get to the the release party Bow Wow release party and I guess Bow Wow's enemies show up and then the brat was like yo I don't even got my gun on me and then the guy next to her was like I got my gun on me and then you know um Shadow Moss is saying I got a where's, where's the guns I got soldiers you know we're down to do this and Bow Wow was like I, this is the reason why I left Atlanta because the goons come out strong and so you know um Soldier Boy didn't show up to um Bow Wow's release party, which is they did they did the album together, but we know why um, Soldier Boy didn't show up because the Amigos was gonna get that ass. <laughs> He's not going to Atlanta. So, anyways, so you know Bow Wow is like trying to get all his goons ready, talking about lock the doors and all this other stuff because his enemies there that he used to rock with they don't rock anymore, and all his enemies friends are all up in the club it almost seemed like it was an episode out of um empire at the casino or whatever and so you know deb she's there brandon's there and um it is what it is it seems like it's gonna be interesting you know they got a lot of good characters on the show they got a bunch of people that are gonna be bringing some drama and they got some um some ideas where i i just want to see where it goes but it's interesting to just see all what's going on <laughs> But it was it was a right. peace. Please like and subscribe. Mary Jane.